Quest 7 on DC circuits. Question 1. You have the 20 ohm resistor connected. Across the terminals of a 12 volt battery, the terminal voltage falls to 0 0.30 volt. What is the internal resistance? That is the question. Now, the total resistance in the circuit is, of course, the external resistance plus the internal resistance there, which is not shown. So, the current of the circuit would be the EMF divided by the total resistance. And the terminal voltage would be the voltage that is produced across the resistance here. And that is just the product of the current and that resistance. So on substitution, that is given as 11.7 because it says the voltage falls 0 0.30. So it's 12 minus that much. And then on calculation you get 0 0.51 ohm as the internal resistance. Here you've got to find the maximum current that can be drawn. See, the, the, the maximum current is drawn when the external resistance is 0. Which means practically it's not being used. So, when the external resistance becomes zero, then the denominator becomes minimum, so the current becomes maximum. So, 5 ampere is the maximum current that can be drawn. Here you have a situation of a 100 ohm resistor connected to a battery, delivers a certain power, 0 0.794 but when the 100 ohm is replaced by a 200 ohm the same battery delivers a power of 0 0.401 so you've got to calculate the EMF and the internal resistance of the battery power is given by I squared R and I as explained before is EMF by the total resistance Therefore, on substituting for I squared, you get this. You can, you can substitute the two cases, which will give you two equations. And then taking the square root and dividing. So you take the square root of everything that makes eliminates the square here. And then when you divide, you get this. cross multiply get the internal resistance as 2 ohm and on substituting the value of internal resistance into equation 1 get the EMF as 9.08 volt you have 6, 8 and 24 ohms connected. What is the minimum? Of course, a minimum resistance is produced whenever you put the resistances in parallel. So, 1 over R is 1 over 6 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 24, which comes out to be 0 0.33. But remember that on the left-hand side, you have 1 over R, so you've got to take... 1 divided by 0 0.33 to get R. So that's 3 ohms. Here you have uh, 12, 2 12 ohms and 6 ohm connected in parallel. And a 12 volt battery is connected. What is the current through the 6 ohm resistor? The idea is to first find the total current. And for that, you have to find the equivalent resistance of these three first, and then divide that by the voltage. In fact, divide the voltage by that, okay. 
So, but remember that since the voltage across all the three resistors are the same, an easy way to do it is just to divide the voltage by the resistance. So the current through 6 would be 2 ampere, the current through 12 would be 1 ampere. And so the total current that starts out from here would be 4 amperes in this case. Because it's 2 across this, 1 each across both of these. Here you have five equal resistors, all of value 2 ohms, connected as shown. And as is very clear, these two are in series, uh, so are these two. Therefore, you have 4 ohms and 4 ohms, and then you have the two 4 ohms connected to 2 ohms in parallel. So, again using the formula for equivalent resistance in parallel, And calculating, you get it as 1 ohm. Uh, this is again a straightforward question. The 14 ampere current flowing into a series combination of 3 and 4 resistors. What's the voltage drop? Uh, voltage drop is just the product of the current flowing and the resistance. In this case, the current through both are the same. It's 14 ampere times 4 gives you 56 volt. Uh, now this circuit has to be carefully analyzed using Kirchhoff's laws. And uh, you know when you take the clockwise route here as you begin from here you're going to the positive, so it will be plus 12, and then you're going in the direction of the current, so it's minus 5y, here it will be minus 6 volt, and then again minus 10, i2 is equal to 0. When you take it in the other loop, follow the same ideas, you get this equation. And then when you apply Kirchhoff's junction rule here, you see that I2 and I3 are flowing into the junction, I2 and I3, while I1 is going away. So I2 plus I3 should be equal to I1. Substitute for I1 in that equation. Distribute. Collect the common terms get an equation 1 and from here when you collect 6 and negative 18 and rearrange you get equation 2. Now to solve the two equations I have multiplied the top one with negative 3 and the bottom one with 5 so that when you multiply and then add the two equations these two terms will get cancel because they are equal and opposite. Okay, because this will become positive 15 I3, this will be negative 15 I3. And then you got to multiply each term with negative 3 here and here each term with 5. And when you do that carefully, this is what you get. Which gives I2 as 0.29 ampere. Take that, substitute into equation 1, you get I3 and so if you add I2 and I3 you get I1 which is 0.62 ampere here once again you find that these two resistances are in series here so it's 2R and it's parallel to R so take the product over the sum and then that is in series with this. 
So whatever you get, 2r by 3, add it to r to get 5r by 3. And then the current would be voltage by res uh, the equivalent resistance. The current is given as 0 0.2, so substitute that and get R as 30 ohms. Here once again you have a parallel arrangement of three resistances, so use the equation. The lowest common multiple in this case is 12, so you get 3 over 4. And on reversing it, you get the equivalent resistance as 4 by 3. And current is voltage over resistance, so that is 2 over 4 by 3. That gives you 1.5 ampere. Uh, this is a problem where you have to find out the time taken, in fact the charge on the capacitor after 9 milliseconds. It, this is a case where it is getting charged. So you have to use the equation for charging of a capacitor through a resistance. Those are the values of the uh, capacitor microfarads and this is in kilo ohms the equation for charging now the problem says you have to find the answer as a percentage so q by qm and then when you take this quantity remember that this is just going to be 8 Oh no, I mean 8 times 10 to the negative 3 there. So we calculate that. You get 67.5%. This is a case where the capacitor is discharging. But you got to find the time taken for it to lose half of its initial energy. So now it's talking about energy and the formula for energy of a capacitor. In terms of charge is U is Q squared by 2C. And uh, you've got to find the time taken for it to lose half of its initial energy. So U1 is 2, U2. That is the initial, that's the final, so twice the final is equal to the initial. Cancel the like terms and you get Q1 is square root of 2Q2. Put it into the equation for charging. Now notice that this becomes 16 because the capacitance is given in millicoulomb, it's 10 to the negative 3, and the resistance is given in kilo ohms, which is 10 to the positive 3. So they get cancelled. That's how you get 16. Now here Q2 has been substituted as, uh, or Q1 has been substituted as square root 2 Q2. Take the natural log of 1 by square root 2 and calculate, you get 5.5 seconds. Now, to convert a galvanometer into an ammeter, you need to connect a low resistance called a shunt in parallel to it. That's what the diagram shows. This is the galvanometer. Uh, and this is the maximum safe current through it, IG, the shunt connected is S, and the formula for shunt is 
just IgG by I minus Ig, where remember G is the resistance of the galvanometer. So 1 milliampere in amperes is 10 to the negative 3. 20 is the resistance of the galvanometer and on calculation you get 0 0.040 ohm. This question is about uh, converting a galvanometer into a voltmeter it says because it says what is the maximum voltage and in order to do that as shown in the diagram all you have to do is connect a high resistance in series with it so now the total resistance of this becomes G plus Rx therefore the voltage is the current flowing which is IG times the total resistance All these numbers are given. Uh, IG is in milliamperes, that's why it's 10 to the negative 3 in amperes. And you get 5 volt. So, good luck. Use this to study. Prepare for the exam, no matter where you are. You're welcome to using these videos.